I want you to kill every golfer on the course. Check me if I'm wrong, Sandy, but if I kill all the golfers, they're gonna lock me up and throw away the key. Golfers! They're Greek, not golfers! If I were to tell you, man, people in Minneapolis are excited about Minnesota football. One might think, yeah, they can't wait for the Vikings to get suited up and play this upcoming year. And believe me, they do love their NFL football in that part of the country. But Jerry Kill has given a lot of people in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area a lot of reason to be optimistic about college football as well in the Golden Gophers. Because the last two years, Minnesota has put together back-to-back -to -back eight win seasons. And last year, they won at Nebraska, which very few people expected. And Minnesota wound up in a New Year's Day bowl game, which hadn't happened in over 50 years. Yeah, like I said, Jerry Kill, the head coach of Minnesota, he's given you know, people in that part of the country – a lot of reason to be optimistic that Minnesota football can win because they now have back-to-back -back eight win seasons, but also that they can continue to build on that win. How did they do it? Well, one with attitude and coaching, of course, but also, two, a solid ground attack and also good defensive play through the secondary. We're going to begin with uh, the defense for Minnesota returning seven starters and a senior-led secondary. You're going to be hard-pressed to find a better corner tandem in college football than the likes of Eric Murray and Body Calhoun. Talk about Murray first, terrific open field tackler, and Body Calhoun five interceptions, including a critical play last year late in the game at Nebraska in which the Golden Gophers were nursing a slim lead. Nebraska was driving late in the final minutes, passed near the end zone, looked like Nebraska was going to catch it for the touchdown, but Body Calhoun stripped the ball and came up with the ball, and that was a critical play late as Minnesota upset Nebraska. Remember that game was on the road too in Lincoln. So you have Calhoun back, Murray back at the corners, and one safety returning. Another senior in Demarius Travis. Add one more senior to the mix at a safety in Antonio Johnson. All upperclassmen back for Minnesota. They ain't going to be lacking experience there. If you're thinking, okay, they're going to have a big drop off after that because they'll graduate them all. Well, Jerry Kill, good news for him. His most recent recruiting class, three of their top six players, defensive backs. So there's not going to be too much of a drop-off if those new guys in future seasons can develop like what we've seen lately in Minneapolis from this secondary. Two of the three linebackers are back for the Golden Gophers, Devontre Campbell and Jack Lynn, but they're going to miss Damian Wilson like crazy. Offensively or defensively for Minnesota, one of their most valuable players. He was a tackle machine. He is going to be missed. Um, we mentioned that Minnesota efficient as far as pass defense. And by the way, they were fourth in the Big Ten when it came to passing D, only allowing 193 yards of passing per game. Pretty darn good. That was 18th in the country. Rush defense needs a lot of work, okay? Needs a lot of work. Uh, the rush D last year wasn't very good. They gave up 174 yards on the ground per game. That's eighth in the Big Ten. That's the lower half of the Big Ten standings and 74th in the country. Got two guys back on that defensive front, Steven Richardson and Therian Cocker. Cocker, I think, can get to the quarterback at an okay level. But, again, the rush D has to be there. And we'll see if they can also turn up the heat a little bit because quarterback sacks last year, um, they know they can get better in this area. They were ninth in the Big Ten in QB sacks, only two per game. So, Minnesota, again, good defense. Uh, that was proof last year when they only gave up 24 points per game. That was 33rd in the country. So, Minnesota's defense, a big reason why Golden Gophers had a winning year for the second straight time. Offense, hey, they can run the ball. That was, that's was that been proven lately. And one of their most valuable runners is a quarterback in the form of Mitch Leidner. And Leidner has a big frame, so not only can he take the contact, but actually, times he delivers it as well. So, he can be used as a running threat, too. But as far as other running threats, you missed the most valuable part of the running attack last year. David Cobb was Mr. Everything. In fact, I think I remember a game against Purdue last year in which in the first quarter, at one point, Cobb got the ball seven straight times. You might expect that late in the game if Minnesota was winning, but not early on in the first quarter. Cobb was that valuable and that utilized, as was the tight end Max Williams. Both, by the way, onto the NFL. So, big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. So we'll see if running back Roderick Williams and also the freshman Rodney Smith can handle the load. I think Williams will probably be the starter for Minnesota as far as running. Tied in, you know, to fulfill Williams' spot, that is uh, Max Williams, uh, you have Lincoln, um, Lincoln Plesic. So he's a senior as well. It's not like the guys that are replacing, you know, Cobb and, uh, and um, you know, Williams haven't played football before. You know, Plesic and Williams are both seniors, Roderick Williams and Lincoln Plesic. But... 
they have been in the system for a while, and that's what really helps. So the transition for these guys of being full-time starters may not be that big of a transition as you might think. Receivers, boy, they have got a lot of bodies to replace. And it's not like Minnesota really used the receivers that much in the first place. But if they can get valuable production from K.J. May, especially this guy because he has got speed. You can use him to throw the ball, but also use him on end rounds and trick plays as well. I think May in the open field is that dangerous. Also, too, Drew Walatarski and a guy as a freshman that could get valuable PT, that's Isaiah Gentry. If these guys can deliver and if Wagner can show the ability, he's got a good arm, but if he can show the ability to complete the intermediate passes, which Minnesota was not efficient at when it came to college football, was the passing department as far as efficiency. If Wagner can improve this area, then teams aren't going to be lining up seven or eight in the box to stop the run. Look, if Minnesota can't pass the ball efficiently, teams will prepare against the Golden Gophers differently. They'll try to stop the run any way they can because they don't think that Minnesota can pass. They need to have a decent passing game. Minnesota doesn't have to throw it for at least 300 yards per game, but they need to show the ability to at least be able to complete passes on a consistent basis, so that way it's more of a multidimensional offense, not just all run. Taking a look at Minnesota's schedule, not too many teams can say that they play the number one and number two teams to start off the year in the country, and TCU and Ohio State are flat on the schedule of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. You open up with the Horned Frogs, number two in the country. Last season at Fort Worth, TCU had their way with the Golden Gophers. I would expect this year's game to be more competitive. In the end, though, I think TCU is just going to have too much. And um, TCU is thinking about the national championship. Realistically, I don't think Minnesota can get there. But the following week for uh, Minnesota, they got to watch out because Colorado State has a pretty good offensive attack, and the game is on the road at Fort Collins. So the uh, Colorado State game, could very well be a dangerous one because it's the week after the TCU game. Could be a letdown game or a hangover game, depending on how you look at it. And then uh, the next two games after that should be wins. Kent State and Ohio both at home. And, by the way, October, first two Big Ten games of the season, both on the road, but both appear winnable at Northwestern and at Purdue. If Minnesota is serious about winning the West Division, you can ill afford to lose either of these games. If so, you might be out of it pretty quick because the schedule does get tougher. Nebraska and Michigan, but at least you get them both at home. And then November, how about this? At number one, Ohio State. A season ago, it was a ball game. Ohio State needed everything and then some to eke out a seven-point win um, in Minneapolis. But this year's game is in Columbus, and the Buckeyes nearly have everybody back. At Iowa, just depends on what kind of Iowa team we see. Some years they do better than what we think. And like last year, they were a big disappointment. So that game's a mystery as far as the status of um, Iowa. And then the last two games at home, revenge game against Illinois perhaps. Somehow Illinois beat Minnesota a year ago, even though I think Minnesota's a better team. That's got to be a revenge game, uh, getting them at home this time. And you close out the year with Wisconsin, who some think is going to win the West Division. I think Minnesota's in for another winning season. Their defensive um, lineup, as far as the secondary goes, I think it's going to be hard-pressed for teams to throw the ball against, but Minnesota has to show the ability to stop the run, like I said. And even though lagner has been in the system for a while, I have to see how he does as a passer. And if Minnesota can get a passing game going, then they'll possibly exceed my expectation of an 8-4 and four campaign and a 5-3 and three record in Big Ten play. I think Minnesota will finish in the upper half of the Big Ten West. I just don't see them winning the division because, look, um, until it's proven to me, you got to be able to throw as well as pass, and, and we didn't see near enough passing last season. And if they fall behind, you just can't rely on running to win the game. Teams will absolutely smother you in that department. Minnesota's good. I just don't think they're going to be good enough to win the West. That's my look at the Golden Gophers. Catch you next time.